Thanks, everybody. I'm uh, Paul Kinahan, who, along with John Boone, was chairing the last uh, the session uh, titled uh, Imaging and Other Omics, uh, Experiment, Fail, Learn, Repeat. I love that. Uh, and so this is the last session. And um, uh, the one slight change to the program is on the program, it lists the concluding remarks uh, by Isam and Matt, that will act instead by uh, Julie Ford, I believe. Uh, and then uh, still an open discussion. Uh, without uh, waiting, let's start. go ahead, John, come on up. Uh, John Boone will be giving the first talk. Thanks, John. Thank you, Paul. I want to thank the organizers for inviting me. This is the first time I've been at um, this AI forum. And uh, my talk is really uh, my life with uh, AI here from AANs uh, to ANNs to uh, CNNs. Um, but uh, first, let me talk about my time with Bob Gillies. So uh, way back when I was on the study section for two uh, chartered terms, and Bob was also a member of the study section, not necessarily in phase with me, but uh, obviously you get to know someone pretty well when you uh, do these study sections for um, eight years in a row. Um, then uh, there was a NCI designated cancer center supplemental grant called IRAT, image response assessment teams. And Bob and I, uh, uh, this was a competitive award and uh, we are one of the eight uh, PIs of that. And that again was a lot of time uh, uh, spent with Bob and others. And uh, uh, from that uh, relationship, he asked me and I accepted to be a member of the external advisory committee here at uh, Moffitt. Um, some time ago uh, now. And I will just point out that the IRAD, as I said earlier, uh, and off the cuff marks, remarks, uh, uh, this sort of was the beginning of uh, Kiba. I thought it was Dan, but I think, Paul, you said it was Larry uh, Clark. Dan for Kiba, Larry for Kiba. Oh, okay. Uh, well, thank you for that. So uh, right before the 08 uh, study section, uh, uh, I was asked by Eileen Bradley, known to many of you, to participate, and I wrote her this email on August 16th, 07, said, yes, I'm honored to be back, and uh, yes, I'll, I'll say yes, and my postscript was, can you bring Gillies uh, back so I can have someone to argue with during the day and drink beer with at night, and that was Bob, you know, we were scientists all day long, uh, from the morning till the afternoon when the work was over, and then we'd go and talk uh, science in the bars uh, till midnight or, or later. Always fun. So this is uh, my life with AI, uh, from artificial neural networks to convolutional neural networks and medical image analysis. And so a long time ago, uh, when I was 34 um, at Thomas Jefferson University, uh, Vince Sig Sigalito, the second author on this paper, at the Applied Physics Lab at Johns Hopkins, where I took the train down from Philadelphia, um, it taught this course on AI. And it was like a three or four day course, I forget. And all of it was on LISP, which was um, the, the AI of the era. And I don't know if for you young people, LISP was essentially if-then logic, right? Uh, and if this, and then they had you know, these long strings. And you know that was mildly interesting to me. But the last half day, uh, Vincent, um, taught about neural networks, and uh, um, I was just enthralled with neural networks. It had such a, a parallel to iterative reconstruction for images um, uh, that uh, I fell in love with this, and uh, Vince uh, gave me uh, his code in Fortran for a gradient descent algorithm, supervised learning, and I converted it. Uh, I knew Fortran, but I preferred C, so I converted it to C, which took a couple weeks, and then we started uh, using it. And this was our first application. And you can see um, it was this world's simplest image. It was a, 20, a five by five pixel image with a signal in the center of it, a three by three. And I used uh, um, Gaussian noise for this. And I subjected this to training and uh, um, uh, with both a neural network and a, a so-called ideal observer. And then we had two observers. One of them was a radiologist and, and me, obviously a uh, a simple task. And you can see that the neural network outperformed the human use users. This is 1989 or so. Uh, but the, it didn't quite meet the uh, ideal observer at, at that time. Um, and I'll rekindle this uh, thought. And of course, uh, we had this performance for SNR of 1.5. 
and a better performance for an SNR of 3.0. Um, so I was, uh, my enthusiasm uh, only soared after that. And, and uh, we did a lot of work uh, with my good friend, George Gross, who was a pediatric radiologist uh, at Jefferson at the time. And so we did the uh, feature analysis with the inputs, but this was a radiologist had a paper and uh, he would just fill in the uh, uh, numbers for uh, uh, the diagnosis for a bunch of uh, creamy kids. And then we trained a, 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 a sorry, um, a neural network uh, to have the diagnosis. And we knew after the fact what the diagnosis really was. So it actually worked about 90% of the time. So it wasn't that, that bad. Um, then we also did this uh, pediatric skeletal age. And this was at the time uh, that Genentech came out with growth uh, um, hormone. And uh, uh, so this ha actually mattered in clinical medicine because a lot of parents wanted their short statured children to have growth hormone, even though they were short uh, statured and that was unethical, it was considered at the time. Um, so uh, um, I was enthusiastic about this stuff and uh, in, uh, published uh, maybe a handful of papers in, in the uh, uh, middle of the 90s. And uh, then I sort of dropped that for 20 years and, and came back and I'll talk about CNNs uh, in a minute. Uh, but uh, in, the, in the meantime, I spent uh, really two decades developing breast CT technology in my lab uh, and have been consumed with that uh, a fair amount. But you can see that uh, early experience with um, AI, uh, coupled with the, the large data sets that we developed with breast CT, uh, led to uh, um, what I'm gonna talk about now with the CNNs. So this is just one paper written by uh, a student in my lab at the time, Fanning Ghazi, super coder, could code anything. Um, he coded the scanner controls as well. And this was just a segmentation of, of a breast CT uh, data set. It was all of our data sets actually. And, and uh, uh, you all know what segmentation is where we um, are trying to identify specific areas, uh, tissue types in the, uh, um, in the image here. And the other, the purpose for this was something else that I, I won't uh, um, uh, bore you with, but uh, fast forward to uh, uh, today, and uh, this is the work of my student, Sonny Liu, who's a senior uh, fifth year graduate student in biomedical engineering at UC Davis. Um, and uh, uh, so this is looking at pre white and mash filter model observer study on um, a number of breast CT cases. So the end is, is re reasonably uh, large. I'll point out that this is not a learning concept, right? A, a pre white and mash filter is really more of a, a arithmetic tool um, uh, for but it does similar things like uh, pseudo diagnoses, right? A, a computer observer uh, um, results. And uh, so um, we spent a lot of time in a, with a previous student earlier uh, uh, with Craig Abbey, who's a good colleague and mathematician at UC Santa Barbara, learning how to insert lesions in a convincible way. So we convinced the radiologists. Uh, of course, these are a lot of simple simplifications here. It's a single loan exactly a task and uh, they're just spherical lesions, um, but uh, that's sort of the standard uh, uh, care here um, in this kind of research. And uh, you can see the numbers here and I won't repeat them. So we did, um, uh, we really took two years at trying to perfect the lesion um, uh, insertion algorithm. And uh, of course, we inserted non-lesions, as I call them, where we identified, we did everything except add contrast. So uh, th those are your uh, negatives, right? So we're, uh, we generate this for each breast and we use uh, uh, 200 uh, lesions and 200 non-lesions. So we generate the signal for the lesions and the background, you calculate the power spectrum in the background, you average these and you divide them in, in, in the Fourier domain and take the inverse transform and this is the filter looks something like this. You can see that we're looking at spherical lesions. This is a little bit reminiscent of a sombrero filter or, or things in standard image processing. So from that, uh, we can then apply it to that same breast the, uh, and um, uh, generate the data necessary to compute a receiver operating characteristic curve. And from that, we calculate the area under it. Um, and uh, you can see the data here. And uh, uh, so now I'm going to talk about the neural network uh, component of this, and we're comparing just these data uh, 
because uh, she just started on the CNN project, although she'd been working on the CNN uh, for uh, a couple of years now. And so uh, for the case of breast CT data sets, of which we have almost 500, um, uh, can a CNN detect a uh, signal known exactly uh, lesions better than a pre-white and match filter, which for certain classes of background is considered mathematically to be the ideal observer. Um, and uh, in my, my conversations with uh, Craig, he said, oh, you're not gonna beat that. Um, uh, so I have an email out to him panically because uh, we did beat it. Uh, as I'll show you in a minute. So um, uh, we use these data sets. Uh, I'll let you read this. Uh, we evaluated this for different lesion diameters, uh, all the all the slice thicknesses, because of course we can average the uh, number of slices to increase the slice thickness all the way up to a, effectively a, a mammogram um, uh, to 45 millimeters or so. But we're using about 0.4 millimeter slices, which is the raw for this data set of, of CT images, breast CT images. And so here are the results with the CNN. And uh, you can see the uh, actually pretty darn a good performance. Not surprisingly, the larger the lesion, uh, the better the ROC uh, curve. Um, and uh, uh, I will just point out that I lifted the data from actually Sunny lifted the data from uh, these data uh, from uh, these two data sets, and the CNN did in terms of this metric the AUC outperform the pre-white and match filter, which uh, I'm anxious to talk to Craig about because I she just Sunny just sent me this data uh, in the last week or so. Um, so there it is, uh, uh, not surprisingly, once again, CNN's uh, uh, sort of rude the day. And so this is my last slide. And uh, um, I just wanted to say one last thing about uh, Bob, and this is probably more important to me personally than it is to anybody in the room, but I'll say it anyway. I was sitting at a study section and Bob was evaluating a, a grant. He was the first uh, reviewer and he was, you know, couching it and, and uh, saying this grants about this and the PI well well he, he's a modeler and I hadn't heard that term before and that's what I I, I said wow that's what I had that's what I am because I, I was modeling x-ray spectra and and doing stuff like that and to this day I call myself a modeler because it was couched by uh, um, uh, Bob Gillies so thank you Bob and thank you for your attention Uh, any questions on the new Paul? He had to run off. So, no, I was back, brought back by popular demand. I did such a good job yesterday.